Hey guys, what's going on? So uh, this is the new thing in the uh, little apartment here, and uh, I've always wanted to get one of these ever since I was a kid. Um, so growing up in being a child of the 80s, like the arcades were like a huge part of it. Like, you know, anything from Pac-Man to like really obscure stuff like Night Striker. Um, I spent a lot of hours in the arcades, socialized, have a lot of memories there. There was a time I peed myself to play Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, the II arcade cabinet, this is the one I chose to go with. Arcade 1UP is obviously the other big player out there. I just decided I didn't want to go for that. I like what they're doing with some of the controls are basically like uh, stuff like Centipede, Tempest, like controls are kind of like non-standard, you know, like spinners and all that. And I think they make sense in that case. But the thing I didn't want to have is like 20 little mini arcade machines piled up in a small place. It just didn't seem very fun to me. So instead I wanted to go the multi-cade route. So there's two ways to do that. You can build it yourself. And if you have the know-how and you, or the want to do that, or the time, that's another thing. If you have all three of those things, you can do that and probably do it better than you could buy one. Or there's routes like this. This is the iArcade. It is a multi-cade, so there's like an online store. It's internet connected. And so it comes with a few games and you can add games through the store. Okay, so one of the reasons I got this machine is the build quality. So this company is fairly brand new. Um, as far as like the build quality, like a lot of the arcade one-ups, they're half half inch mdf you know like the controls on them are just basically bottom tier in my opinion like the sticks and stuff don't feel very good on them they're kind of sloppy um and they just seem like they're just basically made for maximum profit i didn't really necessarily have a problem with that when they were going for like 350 400 a pop but now they're going for as much as 700 dollars. and this machine's in that same ballpark i got this for six so i actually got a little bit cheaper in a couple of them and just the fact that all the machines are built to have like one or two games and they're just not expandable so this here is actually made of three quarters MDF instead of uh, half an inch. And the other thing about this is just like some of the features. So you don't have any like light up marquees. They have a few different versions of this. There's a double, or actually this is the double dragon one. There's dragon's lair. Uh, there's a couple other versions of this. This one's what they call the black cab. So you can actually re-sticker it to whatever you want. So technically it's actually a black cabinet. And then if you see the art and the reason it looks like off or something like that, that's my fault because you put the stickers on yourself. So right here it has this nice uh, 4x3, 19 inch. It's a 1224 by 1280 resolution. So pixel density, it's about the same as like a 1080 screen. Um, it's not the highest quality. It does have pixel shift, or I should say color shift. So if you get off axis, but like when you're on it, it looks really good. Um, it's a little bit shorter than a normal arcade machine. Those are about 25 inches long. This is at about 20. It does have these two big, huge speakers on the top here, and there's actually a 100 watt amp built into this thing. So these are 50 uh, watts each, and it's actually using uh, 16 by nine speakers, even though these are circular grills, it's 16 by nines in here. Now they're not like uh, uh, two way 16 by nines or anything fancy like that, they're just regular normal ones, but this thing can thump pretty loud if you want it to. Rain gas skies. <laughs> One of the things I like about it is it's got a Bluetooth functionality and it works a cu couple of ways. So there's actually a jukebox app that you can download on here and you can Bluetooth your phone in it and just use it like Bluetooth speakers and use its functionality that way. You're also supposed to be able to use Bluetooth, uh, like use headphones with it, but all I have is AirPods. And for some reason it only comes through one channel whenever I try to do that. And to kind of round off the audio portion of this, there is a 3.5 millimeter jack in here. So you can put like, say like 32 ohm headphones and plug them directly into the control deck it's perfectly fine and it does a pretty good job of um you know powering and have, has pretty decent good sound coming out of it all right so one of the nice things about this control deck is it's a standard layout six buttons 
Uh, I didn't know what I thought about the A, B, and C being on the top as far as the bottom because I'm just kind of used to how like console controllers are set up. But it works because if you were to put all the main buttons down on the bottom for like other games like shooters and stuff like that, your hand would kind of come off the control deck a little bit. So it makes sense in that way. Um, up top we have a menu slash pause button. I've had problems with pause on this as far as like the emulation for like a lot of arcade games go. This can actually play modern games too and we'll get into that in a second. But uh, sometimes it like does this like weird hand up and stuff after you come out of pause right now until they fix that I would say don't plan to pause this is what the menu looks like and it's pretty straightforward and it's broken up into different sections and apps like there's the jukebox app I was talking about um, and it has like date and time and all that stuff this thing is internet connected so it's aware of all that unfortunately the store for this machine is not on here. You have to go to their website and then link the machine to your account on there and then buy stuff and it just knows when you bought stuff and downloads it. The other thing is, is like, I would just like to see a native app. There's also no iOS app. So I have to use a website. There is an Android app though. Okay, and for volume, it's actually like two Senwa style buttons. All the stuff on the control deck is kind of like those Japanese uh, convex uh, Senwa style and these are actually Senwa buttons on this so they have a couple versions of this but um, just those two buttons for volume up volume down same thing with player one player two and there's a coin button so it thinks it's getting coins put in and then the power button has this like little ring or like glow around it so you know when the system's turning on and off because versions one, one of these were just like a regular Sanwa button and people were having a hard time distinguishing when it was going to sleep when it was waking up when it was actually completely shutting down or turning on because you have to actually hold for a couple seconds and then there's like this like a little bit delay before it starts kicking on so now having a visible light on there uh lets you know when it's completely off when it's just asleep or something like that so this is actually version two of their design okay so as far as the specs in this it's running on a board that's a rock chip rk3399 came out in 2016 so it's a bit of an older chip but it seems to have like similar horsepower or maybe a little bit less than a nintendo switch i would argue it's actually probably a little bit more because the nintendo switch's uh tegra x1 is actually clocked down from normal spec to save on battery and stuff so they're probably roughly about the same um however having said that this is running on a fork of android and android's kind of iffy when it comes to some games so this has like some modern games and stuff on it too there's uh one that i really like called rising hell and uh it's, this is like simple pixel, pixel graphics runs perfectly fine on here there's like another shooter on here i can't think of the name of it right now but uh really good game and um Kind of reminds me of Ikaruga a little bit. And then there's another one that you guys probably all know is Dead Cells. And there's other stuff on here like Wonder Boy and the Dragon's Trap and, and stuff like that actually plays on this machine. Okay, so there's actually like two versions of this. So the internal hardware is the same. It's the same RK3399 with four gigs of L uh, LPDDR4. And it's relatively powerful for what it's trying to be. As Definitely as far as like the home arcade units compared to arcade one up and there's other stuff out there and there's like the at legends machine which i think that machine's actually really cool this is definitely a little bit more powerful than those um as far as uh controls there's like two versions of it so there's one that comes with 64 gigs of memory one that comes with 128 and a difference in the controls are is like um very good quality but knock off sanwa controls and then this one the 128 gig that i have actually has sanwa buttons on it and sticks so you're yeah, like the jlfs and in the sun while like clicky buttons and stuff like that on there. The sun was are fine. Um, I know they're like really revered by a lot of people. I think there's better products out there, but you know, you definitely want like good quality and something like this if it's gonna be in your home for a while. And I, I'm glad that they decided to step up and do that on the higher tier one. The other thing I heard in early reviews, and I think they've changed since then, but don't quote me, maybe the non-Sawa Sanwa parts are this way, but I can confirm the Sawa sticks are this way, is in US arcades, we had Octo, uh, gates which means when you turn the stick you know like if it's up down left right there's kind of like a lock in there but there's also one for like diagonals and that's very very important for games like congo bongo and anything else that moves in kind of like a diagonal direction as opposed to straight up and down right and so square gates work fine and that's typically what's used in japan but for the sama parts in this they went with octo gates and i don't know i'd like to see if there's any other irk owners out there that have the non sama parts and you have like the newer version 2.0 with like the lighted power button do you have octo gates or do you have square gates in your machine that's something i'd like to know in the comments down below all right and last thing about the machine i'm going to mention is overall it is actually a bar top 
So everything's con condensed into one bar top, and then they sell the bar top by itself. I think like right now it's on sale for like 300 bucks. And so this whole thing can just be put together and put on top of like a counter or a tabletop or whatever, and it's fine that way. Then the riser itself connects through, it's actually got like screws and stuff, and typically they sell that for like 150 extra, and it's going for as low as 50 now. I've seen this whole setup go for about 400 bucks with the riser, with like the lower 64 gig one. And there's been a lot of sales on this now, a lot of games on the store are on sale because of the holiday season. And that's why I wanted to get this video out right now. So the machine with the riser on it, the control deck's about um, three inches taller than an arcade one up. So it's sitting around like 40 inches or so, and you can raise it up or down an inch. There's actually like feet on the bottom that can raise it up, up and down and you can like level it out and all that stuff. It is, it does sit quite a bit taller than an arcade one up. So if you got kids or something like that, you might want to just get like the bar top and then set it down low so that you can get a, you know, reach it or something like that. Because uh, once it's on the riser, it's very much a machine for adults, not for kids at that point. Um, I guess if you had a stole or something like that. The other thing I like is how the screen's angled and all that stuff, but I love how the riser on it, it just looks like it's all supposed to be one piece and unlike the arcade one up, it doesn't have like an elephant's foot on the bottom of it, you know? You can kind of pick and choose how you want to use this machine and if you get the riser, you can always take it off and use it as a bar top or take it somewhere with you if you want or something like that. If I had any real complaints about this machine, there isn't too many besides it. It does come with this piece of plexi to cover the LCD, so there's LCDs actually underneath here and then this plexi over it. They do sell a piece of glass that is supposed to be coming in and the first complaints with the first round was they only protected one side because the other side was kind of wrapped with like the screen and stuff and I guess they thought it was protected that way. So that got all scratched up. So then they wrapped both sides of the plexiglass and it still gets scratched. It's just, it's the acrylic. It's just not, you know, it's just what acrylic does. A lot of times when you're playing it, you don't notice it that much, but I want something I can wipe down like glass and stuff. And the other thing I have to complain about this is the way that they build this cabinet and have this sit in here is the control deck is basically you put the, this up you hold it you put the control deck in and you bolt it down right and then this just is supposed to rest on top of the control deck basically problem with that is is it's got these black borders on it and so when it slides down when i'm standing up it cuts off like the top uh the high score just the score on some games and stuff like that so i had to take double-sided tape and tape it so it would stay its stay itself up and i can actually see the entire play field um, some of these games just run like right to the very edge of it. But uh, as far as the screen itself, I like it. I like how they have this like rounded edge, like it's a video screen. And it's got enough power to it that it can do, it's got a couple modes that's very convincing of like an old looking monitor. And that's where that like higher resolution comes into play. So that's really the only thing I have to complain about. Now I would say a lack of a store is another complaint on here, but other than that. Okay, as far as games go, basically all they have right now is Data East, uh, Taito, there's, um, Psycho, they do like a lot of shooters and there's a lot of really good shooters on this thing. There's like Strikers 1945 and Strikers uh, 1945 Plus, which is like the Neo Geo version of 2. There's like Windjammers on here. There's a lot of really good stuff on here. We've obviously got Burger Time. There's Sega stuff on here. So there's Congo Bongo, Shadow Dancer, which is basically Shinobi 2 in the arcade. Other stuff like Space Harrier and all that kind of stuff. So they're growing and they're doing a pretty good job of bringing out like a mixture of older games but also newer games we still need namco to sign on capcom those guys and i think if they can stick it out and keep doing what they're doing because they're doing a good job with what they have they literally just started up as a company last year i think they'll eventually get there and get noticed i don't know what the exclusivity exclusive rights to arcade one up and what they have with like Capcom and stuff, and maybe that's something that's held up. That's all speculation, but uh, they say they're working with hold, uh, licensee holders all the time, and they're trying to get these deals done and get these games out on this machine. My advice, whether you should buy this or something else like the uh, at, Le at Games Legends arcade machine or something like that, and there's two different versions of that, and you can look up videos on that. It really comes down to if you want to build it yourself. Uh, I think the At Games is like a little bit more versatile. You can build your own machine. There's definitely technology out there like side on like gun technology so if you want to like add games like t2 and stuff like that to your cab you can you don't need to give arcade one up 700 dollars of your money for literally one game and a couple of guns but as far as like your general games are just like stick and button here um this is perfectly fine i like it i think
think the prices are fair for what they're doing. I think the price is really, really good for the quality of this thing. It's it's killer quality. But if you're somebody that just wants Centipede or Tempest or something like that, get the arcade one up because the controls are going to be a lot better on there. The games actually exist on there. That's another one that's surprising on here is Atari's not joined onto this yet. I think that's a matter of time that they will, though. Atari seems to be on board with pretty much anything these days. For me, it was just I didn't want to like a whole bunch of stuff crowded in here. It, this is something I've always wanted to sen since I was a kid. It was one of these and like a pinball machine. So it's cool to have this because it's just one of those things that you look at as a kid and it's just like, wow, it's like that would be cool to have that. But apparently it's thousands of dollars and now they've made it down to the point where it's still a lot of money, but you know, it's not thousands of dollars. So, okay. And that's it. I will be covering a lot of games in here and a little bit more depth for like little 60 second shorts on YouTube. So keep an eye out for that. If you guys like this video, thumbs up, all that fun stuff, subscribe, see you in more videos.